Welcome to In Touch with iOS podcast, episode number three. I'm your host, Melissa Davis, and I'm catching up here with David Ginsburg. It's been a little while since we've recorded, so we need to catch you all up and get you in touch with us. So, Dave, what's new? Oh, my gosh. It's been a long time since we've talked. Too long. <laughs> Can't let that happen again. Yes. Uh, what is new? I have some new technology. Oh, no, I don't. I've yes, you do. I'm keeping you, a lot of my stuff. What did I get? Oh, yeah. I got a new Apple Watch. You got a new Apple Watch. You got a new iPhone. And you got ear pods. And like you said, yeah, I just got an iPhone. I do have an iPhone 7 Plus. I have the, uh, uh, the Apple Watch uh, Series 2. What so, size uh, hard drive did you get in the iPhone? <laughs> Two fifty six. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and I'm I think I still have. I'm gonna send you my movies, <laughs> my photos. <laughs> yeah. and... <laughs> I, uh, I I think the last time I checked on here, I have at least 144 left. So, uh, so and, do you do you feel like you needed all that space? You think you're gonna use it? Uh, you're gonna load probably music not. On? What, what do you think you're gonna I use mean, it for? Let's see. I have 1,400 songs on here, which isn't much. Wow. 91. 9,198 uh, photos are on here. Okay. And 210 applications and 285 videos. So. Do you have pets, Dave? I do not. You need no to pets. get a pet and then you will take more pictures and then you will <laughs> fill up that damn iPhone. <laughs> no. no, I don't want to fill it. <laughs> don't let your wife hear this. Because <laughs> I have kids. They're my pets and wow. I take tons of pictures. I have over... 40, I think I'm at 45,000 pictures now in iCloud and like 370 some videos. So, yeah. And I'm yeah. rocking a 64 gig and I still have about six gigs of space left. <laughs> yeah. I, when I had a 64 gig, it was fine. I never yeah. had any real issues with, uh, with that. So, um, yeah. So I'm not complaining about that. I'm at not all. storing any music on it though. See, that's the thing. It's all very. Uh, holistic and needs based, in my opinion. I think it it just really has to do with your needs, what you need to right. do with that space. And so, for example, like my sister in law loves music, and so she wanted the big one so that she could store all of her music on it. Um, and she's got two pets, so she's got doggies. And I taught her how to take uh, live photos in slow mm -hmm. motion. So uh, yeah, that'll be a fun project. We're going up there to visit her this coming weekend, and um, she has started taking a lot of slow motion videos. She's taken some of fire that was really cool. And I'm going to take some bubbles up there for the doggies and see how they, see how they like the bubbles. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. I, I've always been a crazy person when it comes to storage. I mean, if I look behind my 27 uh, inch Thunderbolt display, I still have to this day. <laughs> I'm looking at it as I speak. Uh, I have a four terabyte, a two terabyte and a one terabyte drive sitting behind there. So nice. I have uh, lots of space and then plus lots of hard drives sitting down at my feet inside of a bin that I probably should be using these God, drives. You're going to be so such on. a bad influence on me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, not like I, I just, you can never have enough, you can never have enough storage. No, so I'm never. always carrying around and um, my iTunes library. I don't like storing it on my Mac. So what I do is I keep a external drive and I have a, uh, 512 gigabyte solid state in a in a uh, enclosure so carry those around with me all the time and uh so you have a plus, pretty large itunes library you have a lot of songs collected uh, over the years well, although i did yesterday i did do my uh iphone special interest group as part of the uh, suburban chicago apple users shameless plug uh Not shameless for, at all <laughs> plug away uh the uh yeah my Apple user group here in Chicago and uh, I do a uh, special interest group for iPhone and uh, the topic yesterday was uh, music and I wonder, I just went, went over and talked about uh, uh, all the different things with music and you know, we're just it's, it's great because you get just that's what's great about those types of uh, situations where you can just sit around and talk about stuff and just don't have to be structured and just like we are here just having fun. Oh, I wish I could um, be a part of that. I'm so jealous of your uh, newsletter. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, so we uh, – so we talked a lot about uh, music. So I last I looked in my library, I had about 25,000 or so that's sitting in uh, iCloud uh, photo library, photo library, music library. Music library, yeah. And, you're, you're the music and, guy uh, and I'm the picture person. No, I have lots of pictures too. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I, I'm, a, I'm an avid photographer. I have a DSLR, so oh. I do I, do that stuff. So you're getting to know me a little more here. Yeah. I, I, I do have a lot of, yeah, yeah. My Nikon D7000, it's an old, old DSLR, but I, I love it. And 
do use it uh, to take pictures. So uh, we're going off on all kinds of topics here, but uh, <laughs> okay. back to back to the music. Uh, but I, what I do is I actually have my external drive sitting on uh, plugged into my Mac, and what I do is my iTunes library stays on there instead. Mm-hmm. So it's you know it's it's it, it pretty much uh, is not filled up at all. So. It, a, a pretty good shape and then the great thing about apple music because that's what we talked about too is, uh, is everything's out there i don't have to it can stay on the cloud i don't need download music because I'm, I'm i'm an apple music subscriber so uh so that's uh, one of the things i have um i'm really far, curious far, far, about far. that does it seem like if you could compare the two does it seem like the apple music works just like photos where um I guess there's a setting that I think I've turned on where it's like optimize your Mac storage. Cause I didn't get a super big hard drive on my new machine that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, sure. So I basically store, like I do have a backup. I do have a machine where I do download the originals to it. Mm-hmm. So I do keep stuff in the cloud, but I also keep a, another copy of it too. Just like you, I'm, I'm a digital squirrel is what I always tell people. And I put all my right. nuts in lots of different trees, you know, lots of different clouds, if you will. Um, because I only got a, uh, let's see, what size is this? I only got the 256 gig. Yeah. So, and my last, I know. (laughs) In my machine. (laughs) Oh, just in the machine alone. Yeah. Uh, and my older MacBook pro, let's see, I think I have the same, yeah, I have the same size, but that one, like, you know, when you look at the the storage space, like the whole bar is taken up. It's just all photos. It's, it's basically almost filled with just photos and some video. Cause I try to offload the video cause then I have external hard drives too that I use and they're all named right. for Sesame street monsters. That's how I keep track okay. of them all. Do you Pokemon have a naming convention over. that you use? No, no, I don't name them with this, whatever they're, their names are the, the 512, the, the 256, the 4 terabyte. The, <laughs> the, it's a my book. It's a Western digital my book. Or, oh, boring. You know, I, just leave, I leave the boring ones. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I like to be colorful with mine. I even put like the little the little icons on there and stuff. And so when they show up on the, one of the older Macs we use as a, as a media server and it shows up on the desktop and, you know, in the sidebar. And I, I just, I like to see my little Elmo and my little Oscar. <laughs> I just think it's cute. <laughs> and then uh, lately what I've been doing is because um, I know this is kind of a tangent, but, you know, trying to manage all of that stuff. Well, then I start to think to myself, well, gee, how old is this drive? And when should I think about uh-huh. replacing this? So what I started doing is like, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a stickler for naming conventions. <laughs> <laughs> so I started naming them, with a naming convention that basically starts with like the year, the year that they were born or something like that, the year sure. that I, that they've been put into service, if you will, because it might've been manufactured at a different time, but you know, so when I first plugged it in and turned it on, it gets that, that date as its name and then what size it is and that sort of thing. So that when I have multiple ones plugged in, I can see which ones they are in the sidebar and I know which ones to click on. So that's my yep. method of madness, if you will. But yeah, so so music and photos kind of work the same, it sounds like, where everything is basically stored in the cloud. And then when you want to listen to a photo or when you want to view a higher resolution of the image, it's there and it downloads really quickly. Now, provided, that's the caveat, provided that you have an internet, well, space and an internet connection, right? This is true, yes. Because I can tell you where I've gotten... um, I've gotten a little stuck with that when, and it's going to happen again. My family are getting ready to go on a road trip and we drive from here in Arizona all the way out to Pennsylvania. And so there's some space, some places that you can imagine across the country that are a little spotty when it comes to internet connection. And we visit some family members that live like way out in the boonies. (laughs) I mean, it's like, it's a comedy. If you watch me, if, if, if you could be a fly on the wall watching me walk around my phone, like up in the air, like, Oh my God, there's no signal. I can't well, take it. Yeah. I felt, I just feel like I can't breathe. There's no LTE here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the good thing about it is the iPhone has got a, a, a especially the newer ones, uh, has a very good range. So it does pick up signal pretty well. Although I was, when I was on my road trip and I'm not going to go too much on my road trip, I did take a road trip from Chicago to Las Vegas to help my friend, uh, drive his cars cause he moved there. Uh, I did stop in Winslow, Arizona, which wasn't too, isn't too far away from where you are. Yeah, I know. And, I was and, stalking uh, you all along the way. 
and uh, the, the signals were horrible there. Were and they? So there was, yeah, there's some. So I mean, you know, I guess it all really depends on your carrier and yeah. and uh, and what kind of signal you're going to get. So, uh, so it uh, yeah, it really varies. Uh, but when it comes to that, but yeah, I agree. But you do you you are kind of at the mercy because as I was in the car driving, I wanted to listen to music, and I was being the DJ when I was sitting. Yeah. Um, in the car, and I had the iPad going, and I had all the songs. I had some songs downloaded because you can just do right. a uh, playlist and just tap it and says Down- downloaded songs. And that's cool because it's all there, easy to access. Then you know what's on the on the device, whether it be your iPad or your iPhone. Uh, so, but the uh, the songs that are on Apple Music, you have to download them if you wanted to to listen to them offline, or if you've got uh, a Wi-Fi connection or a cellular you'll be able to listen to it. So, so you down, did you, did you think about that before you went on the road trip? Did you download a bunch yeah. of songs that you knew you wanted to hear? Yeah, we had some and then others I was at, as we, as we drove through the seven States we went through, uh, each, each place I would play it for a while and then it would lose, we'd lose a signal. Yeah. And then so, but, but, but you downloaded part, all the Eagle songs, right? I, yeah. Well, especially, you know, <laughs> stand, and on a quarter in Winslow, Arizona, yeah, such a fun sight to, to see. Had, you know. Right, you had to. Play I had to have that. Yeah, yeah so, we listened to it at least five times as we were, as we were on our way there. So, so for people uh, who don't know, Dave and I are pretty big Eagles fans. I I will say yeah, we have that in yeah. common for sure. Um, yes. it kind of reminds me of a funny little side story. So when I was a teenager, was like at that awkward age before you could really go out and drink and like do anything, we used to cruise. Um, my friends and I we'd drive up and down the strip at this one place back where I used to live, and you know you would play your music really loud it was it was a time and a place where people would show off their cars or muscle cars and I was driving my daddy's car and I thought I was all all you know with all this and it, it, back then it was cassette tapes right so yep. <laughs> and I just remember something malfunctioned and we had this thank god it was an eagles <laughs> cassette I can't remember which one it was <laughs> but you know it's probably take it easy or something but I just remember no it was hotel, it was hotel california actually sure. and so this the tape had gotten stuck in there. It was that, that was the only thing we could listen to. <laughs> so of all the things that you could be stuck with on a road trip true. and, and you've, down, you've managed to download before and you have no cloud connection, let it be Eagles. I agree. Well, let's go back to technology, shall we? <laughs> oh, we've never left technology. <laughs> oh, I, I see, we did. I, okay. Yeah, I like to. I, w- uh, I want to hear about your new Mac. Oh, gosh. I know you've been pretty excited about that. I love it. I So I got several things, actually. Um, I don't know yep. this, not this year, but last year. So just uh, just in time to be able to claim it on my taxes, luckily. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I guess I, I guess you could say I had a good Black Friday. And I'm not usually much of a Black Friday shopper. Like, I do not go out into the crowds. Like, I do not leave the house when it comes to Black Friday. I love to take advantage of all the Cyber Monday sales and all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. But I did make an exception one year, and it wasn't terrible at all. So I, before I get to talk about the, the MacBook Pro, um, I did get – I was on the fence. I think you remember this. I was really on the yeah, fence about this. And I finally decided to bite it, and I got a Series 1 Apple Watch. <laughs> and, you know, it was very awkward timing because I was really sick at the time. That's one of the reasons why we haven't been recording because I had, like, a touch of, like, walking pneumonia for a while. And mm. I could barely breathe. And so, yeah, recording just was not happening at the time. So that's a little bit sure. part of the hiatus. I think I have a good enough excuse. And so the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, you, you get this device, this this brand new gadget, and it, it it's, it's uh, billed as being a fitness device. And I was the least amount of fit I could be at that time yeah. when I got it. It was just a decision over you know, price, the price was right. It had dipped down in sales. In fact, I was looking on one website that I like to shop at a lot, um, B&H Photos, where I, where I usually order oh, yeah. the big stuff. Yeah, you, with your cameras, you probably are really familiar with that. And I was on even the using phone. the app, and I was looking at, you know, they kept telling you what the sales were and what was going on sale. And they actually had the um, original, I don't know what you want to call it, Series Zero, the the original Apple Watch was on sale and it, yeah, that's what they it, it, it dipped down below two hundred dollars and I was like, Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You know, and I was like, I was looking at, you know, because I had been budgeting for this stuff for a long time. I had um my friend sure. Kevin helped me get a, a monitor. He t- took a picture of a, a I think it was a Staples ad. <laughs> Actually took a picture <laughs> of a newspaper and texted it to me and I had a gift card for Office Max. So I got like a, you know, a, I don't know, $120 monitor for like 50 bucks. So I was excited about that. I was on a roll. And so I had gotten, so I got a new uh, external Dell monitor. I'll tell you why that's important later. Yep. And then I saw this sale on the Apple Watch. And like I said, it went below $200. And I was like, oh, this is great. And so I was all set to get it. I had it in my shopping cart. In fact, I even, 
I even bought it. I even actually ordered it. And then, you know, this always happens. You buy something and then you see something else go on sale. And then Target came out and had its Black Friday sale. And so they had a Series 1. And I want to, you know, I did the math and it came out to be like $42 more with tax, you know. And I was like, for $42 more and I get the newer version of the thing. So I canceled my other order and... Lucian, my little boy, he was like so excited because he's he's just been oh chomping at the bit for me to get an mm-hmm. Apple Watch. He could not wait to get his little hands on it. Mm. And uh, so we did that kind of special. We waited till the evening after the crowds were all gone, and it wasn't that bad at all. And I actually ordered the watch online, yeah. and like in a couple of hours, when we were feeling better, we hopped in the car, and I was actually in my in my jammies, <laughs> one of those. <laughs> And we we just, you know, went right around the corner because there's there's one close to us and we picked it up and came home and I let him do the unboxing and we made a little video and stuff. It was really cute. So uh, that was the other thing was that uh, the one that was on sale had this really bright, atrocious orange band, you know, and Mm -hmm. I'm not very fashionable, like pretty fashion challenged, I would say. <laughs> but even I do, I just, ooh, I didn't feel comfortable walking around with such a bright, like, here's my Apple watch. Look at it. I didn't really want it to be. Sitting here? I have at least four how, or five how... bands I switched. Oh, really? So <laughs> mine came out with what mine, this one I just bought came in white. So don't yeah, so I got the white one. So I was much happier with the white one. In fact, I'm wearing it today. I didn't like it at first because it was so bright and so stark, but I'm used to it now. And I did, I, I, I started looking in fact, on Amazon and I think on Wish.com, I ordered other bands because I really had to have my purple. Everything I have is purple. People know mm-hmm. that about me. It, this is just a fact of life. I have yeah. my lavender and I have my dark purple. And then I got Milanese Loop. I got one of those. Um, all on, you know. The, the for, fake version. Yeah, the fake version. Exactly. Which, <laughs> I mean, I looked $150, at the, I couldn't justify it. Yeah, I looked at the real version at the Apple store and I just thought, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not that special. So, yeah. But that's all I really need. I mean, that, those are the oh. basic colors. I might maybe get black someday. Um, let's see. I got the, what is it called? I guess it's the aluminum. So it's the silver model. Yep. But we, we have the same one. Yeah. Same, so Same color. We'll get to compare that soon when we see each other. Yeah. Yeah. Next talk. <laughs> we'll talk about. Um, I can tell you, uh, I think you made a very wise choice because oh, I had it, the the first gen is what that first one was called. Okay. Okay. Uh, Battery life was atrocious because yeah. I would be lucky if I get a day's worth before it would be got done. That was the, the series one, factor. the series one and the series two. And you probably can notice it. You know, I'm, I've used my watch all day long and there's probably, I'm getting notifications and, uh, Oh wow. The Apple stock went up to $140 for the broker record. Nice. I'm looking on my watch here. Um, it, uh, it's at 79% right now and I've been using it all day long. So yep. I could leave it sitting and not be on the charger for a f- almost two a full days and and without having to charge it. Yep, so mine's at they, 75. They've, they've done amazing improvements on the on the. So I, I think you were very smart in holding back and spend that extra forty two dollars. Well, I got I'll, a little help from you, Twitter, you, you so that. that was helpful. I I tweeted out uh, yeah. and asked people like, "What should I do? What should I do?" And they're like, "Yeah, battery life. Battery, battery life. life is worth forty two bucks." So yeah, that that's what it really came down to. But yeah. I have to say, so back to like being sick was, you know, I, I got this thing and I, of course I was as excited as I could be about it. Like I, I had already decided for my business, I really need to have the gear that I'm going to help people with. And I, I'm at sure. that, I'm at that point in time where I can see it coming. You know, I can see my clients starting to get more and more interested in wearables and starting to have more and more questions about it. And this did really come in handy. I was it it made up for any doubt that I would have had about it because when I went to visit a client in Florida recently, she had gotten a Fitbit Blaze. And so mm-hmm. it was really interesting to be able to sit there, the two of us, and compare apples to Fitbits <laughs> and and look yeah. at the differences. And and it was interesting. And there was a lot of things. There were very few things about the Fitbit Blaze that I liked any better than the Apple Watch. And I was really glad that I had the Apple Watch at that point in time because I do have a Fitbit, you know, the kind you clip to your waistband, and I had been using that. Um, So that kind of got me interested in a wearable to begin with and then even just tracking any kind of fitness whatsoever. It's definitely an adjustment because wearing it on your wrist is different than wearing it on your hip. And we could have... We'll save that for other topics to delve deeper into as far as sure. uh, different stuff about the Apple Watch. But suffice it to say that I was a little I was a little bummed out because when I got it, I was sick and I couldn't really like actually track my health with it because I was just not healthy at the time. And so yeah. slowly, ever so slowly, I have been 
getting more and more excited. Like I, you and I share each other's um, fitness data, and then I have a couple of other friends. And it's actually, there's just something, I don't know what the word is to use. There's something um, fun and yeah. just nice about waking up. As soon as I put it on, I get these notifications that, oh, Dave, you know, or, you know, throughout the day, like, oh, Dave's made like 200% of his move goal. I'm like, yay, Dave. <laughs> and, you know, we text uh, Kevin and Elisa from the other podcasts and we text each other little, you know, smileys or little like way to go. And um, yeah, my friend, uh, I haven't, you know what? I got to share with Barry. Is, is he into sharing? His yeah, he's, activity. Uh, him and I share. Okay, yep. well then I gotta so, I gotta hit cold. him up because well yeah. he walks uh, he walks a lot. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll never try oh, yeah. to keep up with him, but it's fun yeah. when you get it's their hard. little notifications and it's it's you know maybe some people see it as gimmicky, but the psychology of it for me is interesting. I just think it's very motivating. I have a friend Nick who no, I agree. we're constantly like you know cheering each other on and giving each other little emojis and it's just fun. It's just really, yeah, it really fun, even if you're someone like me who isn't necessarily working out. But even just, you know, I think about things differently, just like other people have been saying, I, I can understand why it's a positive thing in people's lives because uh, we had family visiting, we went to the mall and I actually, they were shopping somewhere where I wasn't interested in. And so I booted up Pokemon Go on the phone for Keegan and I just grabbed him, you know, like I was holding his hand and, you know, swinging my arm together and we walked because he just wants to go catch Pokemon. So we walked up and down the mall and I started to work out and I was really intent on closing that little darn circle. And I was so excited when I closed that circle. So there's definitely something about closing the little circles. That's just a lot of fun. So yeah, I got, so I got my Apple watch. So I've got that new gizmo. And then, um, in between there, there was also another sale and I ended up getting an, Apple TV fourth gen. It's actually a fourth gen. Nice. Confusing. In the last episode, I was confusing it with my iPad fourth gen. But oh my gosh, we have been having so much fun with that. Again, we'll talk about these things in more detail. But I did want to let you know that my favorite, and I'll put this in the show notes, my favorite game so far has been uh, Sketch Party TV. You remember okay. talking about that? It's basically yeah, yeah. like Pictionary. And you basically either pass around an iPad or an iPhone, you know, you pick a designated one that's connected to the Apple TV and you get, uh, what is it, like six, six, I think, words and you have two minutes. And a couple times now we've had people come to visit, just, you know, friends or family coming to visit for something or other. And we play that. And it is just so much fun. People who don't even, might not even have any interest in the Apple TV at all. And it's just a really fun game to play. So... Loving that. Uh, the kids are just absolutely loving it. They're always playing Minions and, oh my gosh, um, what's the other one? Um, not Frogger, but it's uh, Crossy Road. They love Crossy Road. Oh my gosh, they love Crossy Road. So that's been really great. In fact, we're going to actually take it with us up to on our trip so that we can you know, have the kids hook it up to whatever TV is there where, where we're staying and, and have them play games on it. The only thing that makes me nervous about it, though, I don't know how you feel, is that darn remote. The remote for the yeah. Apple TV is slick, and I need to get a skin for it or something. And it just, like, I looked it up, and I think the remote alone costs, like, 70 bucks. I'm always telling the boys, I'm like, you drop it. Do not drop it. <laughs> yeah. Because I could there, just see it. There is a, a an adult version of that the fun called Jackbox for oh, Apple TV. Really? I've, I've, you're familiar with that. Um, I did, I did play it, uh, with, at, uh, actually it was with Barry <laughs> <laughs> and it's some, some very interesting and can be a little bit, like I said, adult, uh-huh. 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 uh, but it's a lot of fun and there's all play that after the kids of, go to bed. Like, exactly. It's a party pack of games and it's called, it's I'll put that in the notes too. It's a uh, Jackbox party pack oh, and it cool. costs, it's not free. It's, it's $25. Uh, but you get some pretty fun games, and it's a party game. So you yeah. get, you know you play with a bunch of people, and we were having a blast. It was it was, it was a lot of fun, and uh, like I said, it, we'll keep it at that. It's adult. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of interesting interesting games. We'll but talk I, about I thought, a mixture of adult versions and kid yeah. versions, and, and the whole yeah. bag. So yeah, but it, but it was fun. Yeah, cool. So Jack, I'll put I'll put that in the show notes too. So my Apple Watch, uh, my Apple TV. And then the MacBook Pro. So I finally decided to pull the trigger on the MacBook Pro. It was just time. Um, like I was telling you earlier, I mean, I have, uh, I also have a 2009 MacBook Pro that I have been using right. all these years. And like I was telling you earlier, it was starting to get to the point where I can justify it as a business expense because I go out on house calls and I take my laptop with me and I do a lot of demonstrations or I do troubleshooting. 
Um, sure. There was a lady that I rescued using, and I, I like to plug them, I Amazing. So I need to put that in the show notes. I rescued a lady who had lost, she had lost access to her Yahoo account. And so we we're trying to get all our contacts off there and trying to scrape everything off of her phone to be able to set up a new account. And so I used iAmazing, plugged it into my brand new MacBook Pro, and was able to get all that stuff off of there for her. Um, same thing with some other family members that got brand new phones. So that's come in really handy. But like I said, I mean, my old laptop, it was starting to become kind of embarrassing because I go and try to do something. Sure. I either have to reboot or it was just getting slow. And it was just getting to be the point where most of my clients were having way more newer toys than, than I was. And I'm the <laughs> consultant. Like, I should have the best toys, you know. So this will last me for another several years. I actually went smaller. I, I'm i really, really happy with it, too. I was really a little nervous about yeah. going from a 15 to a 13. And this I is where I'm the... What is that? So I'm thinking about that, too. Well, so having a display, an external display, makes all the difference. And I just love being able to put, you know, pop this thing into my, my tech bag, which is, this is kind of silly and I have to share this. I'm actually using an old diaper bag. That's actually one of those like hot couture, you know, it's a <laughs> fancy diaper bag. It's not, it doesn't really look like a diaper bag. It's like black and pleather and it's all shiny and stuff. It's actually pretty sexy looking. And, uh, I thought, you know, I'm the Mac mommy, so it kind of fits with what I do. <laughs> so I've repurposed a talk about what's in your bag. We're going to have a, what's in your bag episode one of these days. Uh, and so now I have this, this diaper bag that I've used and, uh, it's just great. It's got like all kinds of pockets for all my little, you know, we were talking about last time, all of our cables and our adapters and our hard drives and just all the things that we have to carry. So yeah, diaper bag works. just kind of fits, right? It just, just works. So I love being able to just, um, unplug it from, I have a couple of things that it's plugged into on my desk. And everything's plug and play. There's no, you know, unless it's a hard drive, there's nothing that you have to like, wait, you just unplug it. I close it. I stick it in my bag, my diaper bag. Uh, I pop my iPad in there and my iPhone and I'm ready to go. And when I come home, then all of my cables are just kind of sitting there. I have them all, you know, organized on the desk and I just plug everything back in and I'm ready to go. And I have like a full size, I have, uh, what is this? Like a 24 inch, I think Dell, Dell display. And so no, it's just like, yeah, it's basically like, you know, I have like an iMac now sort of, but it's nice because I, then I can use, I'm looking at it right now. I mean, I have my main screen in front of me and then off to the right hand side, I have my MacBook pro. And then I have like smaller things like maybe messages or stickies or my to-do list, you know, things that are smaller that don't need to have so much screen real estate. And I've got those over there and oh, I love the touch ID. Oh my gosh. That's my favorite part. I have to say I'm a little, I'm disappointed in myself as far as the touch bar is concerned because I'm really? just not really using it yet. It, it'll, it'll come. I just, uh, I think it's because of the setup that I just described. I'm using it as like a, an external monitor for the most part while it's on my desk. And it's only when I actually unhook it and take it to a house call where I'd have the opportunity to use the touch bar, but I just haven't really felt, found a whole lot of use for it just yet. And I will find it. I will find it. Don't get me wrong. But the thing that I use the most is that Touch ID. I just and I love showing that off. That's the first thing I do when I when I oh, see I someone and I want to show my new my new baby. <laughs> I say, take a look at this. And I've got it all. It's all it's all tricked out. It's like it's got a purple because um, you know we just talked about how I have to have my purple. Uh, it's got a purple casing on it, and then it's got a purple keyboard skin. And then I have my purple desktop and I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get sick of purple. Everybody's <laughs> sick of me just saying the word purple, but okay. <laughs> I love it. It just makes me happy. So I'm really loving that. I love the touch ID. Um, I love USB-C. I'm just going to say it. I just, I don't care. I don't care that I have to have a few dongles here and there. I've actually gone to the extra trouble to replace a couple of my cables so they don't have to use a dongle. I just use like the microphone that I'm speaking into right now is just sure. straight up USB, uh, what is it, mini on one end and USB-C on the other. And I don't have to worry about, it's just plugged straight in. I have one uh, four port hub. It's not a powered one. It's just, it's just plugged into USB. And yep. the few things that I still need, USB 2.0, or actually these are 3.0, USB 3. They have the blue centers. Uh, anything that I need those for, I just plug them in there. In fact, it even has power out so I can plug the USB-C power on the end of it and still charge my laptop. So yeah. that works great. I love the little power brick. I love the fact that 
you can just plug one USB-C cable and the ends are exactly the same. There's no more like, did I plug it in right? Oh, got it. I have to turn it around. Right. <laughs> have, have you ever heard the, the joke about the, the man who invented the USB? They said that, that he died and at his funeral, when they went to lower the casket down, they had to push it down and then pop it back up <laughs> and switch it and put it back down on the ground. <laughs> oh, oh, it's horrible. I know, I know, but it's so applicable. <laughs> no, there's some great hubs out there, and we can talk about that in a future episode. But there is some, yeah. there are some great. I saw some pretty cool hubs that are out there that that'll. In fact, that they even match the color of your of your MacBook Pro. Oh um, yeah, those are nice. I have looked at some of those actually. They're they're pricey though. Yeah, anything that you've got to, you know, you're going for the designer angle as far as that's concerned. Um, but I've just stuck with just the plain old white. Everything's pretty much white for the most part. Yeah. Um, I did get, I have a red, I did I did get a little fussy with one thing. I ha- happen to have a red external USB um, hard drive that I keep some stuff on. And so I got sure. a red USB-C cable for that. So had to, had to have okay. that match. Yeah. You're, you're allowed. I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've been loving this thing. It's super, super fast. I love the form factor. Um, I love the fact that I thought I was going to miss the chime. I really thought I was going to miss the bong. In the yeah, beginning. it's gone. It's it, you gone. can't even re-enable it. And no, it, there's there's no hack for it at all. I guess no. There was they thought there was one out there, so that the community was up in up in arms. No more time. Ta- no more. No more chime. <laughs> no more time. No more chime for you. No more chime for you. Uh, but I thought I was going to miss it, and I do a little bit. But what I what I got that I like is now when you plug it in, it makes the same little noise that your iPhone makes when it plugs in. And so it's very – it feels so much more closer. It's hard to put this into words. It feels so much more closer to my iPhone and my iPad. It, it feels like they're a little family, whereas the other – my old MacBook Pro is just so much bigger, heavier. I mean – I know we can yep, talk right. till till the day's end about inner <clears throat> light or whatever. I you know I don't really care about that so much. At least I didn't think I did. I do like the thinness of this. Um, it's definitely easier to handle. I mean, my joints start to ache after a while sometimes. So picking up and lugging around that big 15 inch, in addition to everything else that I carry, was getting a tad bit cumbersome and heavy. And this is just so nice to just be able to just whip it out. I mean, it feels like I mean, gosh, I have a a fourth gen iPad. And it's almost a, about weighs about the same as that. At least, no, it weighs a little bit more. But I mean, as yeah. far as thinness and everything goes, and the size and the form factor, it just it feels like it's a lot easier to manage all these all these pieces now. And I'm really really happy with it. Um, I think you've got me convinced now because I was uh-oh. on the fence thinking about going to 13 uh-oh. inch, and I, I think I might do it because I agree with you. Sorry, Kathy. You know, no, no, I was <laughs> no. I'm we've already got a plan to do it. So. Oh, okay. Uh, this isn't oh, no. like you're putting me over the edge just because you have it. No, this, this was planned. Don't, don't worry. So as far as you were on the edge between the 13 inch, you were 13 and the 15. Cause yeah. I've bought, I've bought the 15 inch for the last three or four versions, three or four miles I've owned. So, well, me too, because I always felt heavy. like I needed that screen real estate. And I, and I did for the most part, because for me, you know, I was coming out of like new motherhood. Like I always, you know, say I'm kind of in this transition now where my boys are getting older and, and I was kind of a digital nomad where I didn't really have a desk in the house. I was kind of like, <laughs> I was re- really, for a while there, I was sitting on a rocking chair with like a little, I had this little table, this like hospital bed type tray type thing that I specifically got to use my with my laptop because you could angle it, make it all ergonomic. And, and that's what I was using. And that's all I really needed at the time. But now I'm starting to get back in. I'm starting to work more. I want to, you know, do this podcast. There's some design projects mm. I have coming up and I really need a workspace again. So I've, you know, I set up a desk and now I've got this, this gorgeous display and workspace. And it's (laughs) just, I love how modular it is. I love that I can break it down into a small piece that's, you know, just the laptop and it's, it's okay. Like I'm used to the smaller screen. Um, I can still get things done because I've taught myself and we can talk about this more in other episodes about tips and tricks for optimizing your screen space because I am used to the smaller form factor now, and I have optimized my screen in such a way <clears throat> excuse me, that I use full screen mode on my apps, and I just gesture to swipe in between the pages. So, I mean, it's not – I make all the text really nice and big and everything, so I'm not straining at all to look at the stuff on this tiny little screen now compared to right. – it's not that much smaller than, than the 15, but a lot of people that are used to big displays will look at this and think, oh, my God, it's tiny. 
but I, I'm I'm used to it. I really really like it. So I've been really happy with it. I'm happy that I made the choice to do Good. the 13 inch because you know being able to scrimp and save and not have to spend so much for the 15 enabled me to get the external monitor and the other little extra and the Apple Watch and you know that sort of thing. So for the price of what I would have spent on a 15, I got all these other extra things. Is the way that that I'm looking at it. It's a better overall. It's a better value for me. Now I did. Um, it took a little while longer to get it. I did get it with the 16 gigs of RAM, of course. Sure. I got the Intel Iris Graphics 550 uh, graphics card. It's the let's see, it's the 3.3 gigahertz Intel Core i7. So I basically okay. picked. Um, I think the way that I did it was I think I picked the top of the line processor. I was a little concerned about the graphics card. I, I skimped on the graphics card a little bit and I skimped on the hard drive because I felt like I'm not I'm not doing lots of huge movie projects. I mean, I will sure. like to do some, but, you know, it's needs based and I just don't have that need per se. And it's far and as budget. Hard, yeah. And budget. Exactly. And for and the hard drive size, I mean, sure, I could have gotten the 512, but I always thought, you know, with these little thumb drives, like we've been talking about these, you know, you can expand your storage that way. And I just right. won't store my whole music library on there. I'll store it on an external drive, just like you were talking about. So there's plenty of ways right. that you can get around that. And oh yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a crazy person with thumb drives too. Like yeah. Lots of 256, 128. So the big ones, <laughs> I don't well, None of these eight gig ones. I, right. I, gotta have yeah. the big, I have the big ones. Now. Nobody They're get so time cheap. for that. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, I'm just really happy with it. Loving the Mac OS Sierra. I haven't had any major glitches that I that I could tell. Yeah. I mean, it's been pretty smooth as far as updates and moving it. You know, everything was a breeze to set up as far as signing into iCloud. And, you know, like I said, I have two libraries when I've got my old one set up with some of the stuff. So it synchronizes a little bit here and there. Um, but other than that, I mean, everything was a pretty smooth transition. Um, can't think of any real major hiccups or problems no. that I've that I've had with it. And, and it matches nicely with your iPad and your iPhone. It does. <laughs> Everything is co color coordinated, and every time you know it, it's helpful because when I go out to house calls, a lot of times you know you've got all these gadgets on the table and you're doing all this stuff, and I'm like, is that mine or is that yours? I'm like, nope, it's mine. It's purple. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I know that it's mine. So uh, yeah, really loving that. Good. Good to hear. So. Um, I know you also talked about you did replace your battery in your iPhone 6, did I you not? I did. I went to the Apple store. I took advantage of the uh, offer that they had to replace the battery because mine well, they, was... They did it for you. They did it for me. Yep. I took it I took it in there. It You know, the process was fairly smooth. It took a little bit longer than I anticipated. I, you know, I was hoping to get in there and in and out of an hour, but it was busy. It always yeah. is busy. So I always... Busy. I never, I always try to manage my expectations when it comes to going to that store. There's just always it's something that could come up. And I was lucky they did, I don't know why they had to tell me this, but I had gotten the last one. So had I gotten there any later, the <laughs> next person in line would have gotten it before me. So I had gotten the last battery that they had in stock. Um, I was sweating it a little bit. I thought, I was almost in a weird sort of way, a little disappointed because I thought I was going to take one for the team <laughs> and have to mm -hmm. like redo it all over again. Uh, so I had really planned hard for this and maybe that's why it didn't happen. Like, you know how, when you carry an umbrella, it's not going to rain uh, kind of no. thing. Uh, so I had backed it up and backed it up and I had it backed up in like three different ways and uh, took screenshots of all my layout and everything and just made sure that if they, I was prepared for them to tell me that they were going to have to, you know, take it apart and do something or like, or give me a new phone or, you know, something like that. I was prepared for the worst. And so, yeah, it was actually rather simple. All they did, I was surprised, like nothing got reset. I was under the impression that removing the battery was going to reset a whole bunch of stuff. And it didn't. I mean, they handed it back and I was like, are you sure they replaced the battery? Because yeah. I didn't have to suffer well, at all. That's so. And that's what's great about the, the Apple Store and the Genius is they, they it's at their discretion what they can do. Yeah. I can give you an example. My sister-in-law, she has the 6 Plus still, so that's a pretty relatively older model, but it still works great. And they've had to replace the whole phone twice. So she's oh basically got a new phone, and, and the warranty was right near the end. The Apple Care was right near the end, so she she brought it over there, and there was a, I believe there was a problem with the screen. There was th that same problem they were having with the touch screen was, wasn't wasn't working properly. Mm -hmm. um, they said, oh, yeah, we, we know that problem. Okay, well, let's replace it. So yep, she walked I've in, always... and, and that's okay. happened twice. So I mean, so her Apple Care was just out, and then she's paid the phone's paid off, and mm -hmm. now she's uh, got basically a brand-new phone. 
Not because um, they, re they replaced it, so. Yeah, what's great about this, I mean, it's not necessarily a brand new phone, but I mean, I take pretty good care of it because like we were oh, talking about as earlier. I, as do I. Yeah, everything gets passed down in this family and there's a family of four, so nothing goes to sure. waste. And um, one of the things that always concerns me is the age of the battery. I mean, my kids are still using the four S's that are how many years old, <laughs> yeah. you know, and there's still... end, end of the line on a, actually I have a four S sitting on my desk. How funny you mentioned that. Oh yeah. I'm look, looking at it right now. I was like, Oh my God, this thing is tiny. I yeah. had one of these at one point in my life. Yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> this is was my mother-in-law's phone. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it's end of the road because you can't can't uh, install iOS 10 on it. So, right. nor would you want to, this thing would probably be slower than molasses. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, uh, yeah, I mean, these are these were great phones. I remember when I had this phone, but it's so tiny. Um, There's actually and I can put it next to my i7 Plus. I'm like, oh, <laughs> what am I doing to myself here? I have both of my hands right now. I'm like, that's oh, funny. Cow. This it's... is like a quarter of the size of, of the size of the i7 Plus. Isn't that amazing? So, like, how funny. did you ever? How did you ever live on a little 4s like that? How? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we just we get uh, Apple knows what's good for us is what I was I, I always like to say. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm glad that they replace, replaced the battery because I mean, I had it for what, about a year, year and a half or something like that now. And so yeah. with a brand new battery in it, it is kind of almost like getting a brand new phone. And so what that means is it'll be that much nicer when I hand it down to my husband. And then, yeah. I, you know, I have to say it is still draining on me. It's not nearly as bad as it was. It definitely fixed the problem that a lot of people are complaining about. It was happening with mine too, where it might get down to say 20% and all of a sudden it would just shut off with no warning. And that, that just wasn't cool. So that was definitely a problem that it definitely fixed. So I was, I was glad that I got the battery replaced, yeah. but I really, I've decided for myself that I think I just consume my phone all day long. I use it for work. I use it for life. I mean, I just live on the thing. And mm -hmm. so it's just not reasonable for me to expect to have any better battery life than I do. So I think when my husband gets it, he doesn't use it quite as heavy as I do. So I think when he gets it, it'll probably just be fine. And it'll just mean that the phone will have that much more lasting power. So then when it gets passed down to one of the boys, then, you know, they won't complain so much. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. So, so um, let's, uh, let's, uh, we have a couple tips that we had uh, out there. Uh, that's some ideas. Uh, the first one that I came up with and I've been telling this to so many people and they're, they're like blown away is, I don't know if anybody realizes on the iPhone that you actually have a magnifying glass that uh, uh, is available and, and it's never, and for some reason, Apple doesn't enable it. And they've also got it. Yeah, but they enable deep. everything else that annoys them. I know. You know what, out of people. And it's just crazy. So, uh -huh. so I wanted to tell everybody, we can, I can walk you through it and actually tell you where to go um, and how to enable this. And what it does is it actually, I mean, this thing's incredible. I mean, I'm sure you've used it. To, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, when I, since I told you about it. Oh, and, I used uh, it before then. I was excited that you oh, knew sorry. about it, too. Okay, good. Because every time I brought it up in, in the Apple user group, they're like, oh, my God, I didn't know about that because there's all these people hadn't been at the, the last sessions I had talked about it. So uh, the way the way you turn, about, turn it on is you have to go into settings, then go under general, and uh, you also go into accessibility. And then under vision, there is a choice magnifier. If you tap that, just there's a little switch, tick it on, turn it on, and then away you go. And auto brightness is in there, too. I leave that off. Then what you do is you you uh, triple tap the home button, and when you do that, the magnifier comes up, and then you can just—I mean, you can go down to like an inch yeah. uh, from from it's incredible. And it freezes the frame, so you can be looking. It's just, I mean, just like having a magnifying glass. It's 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 so awesome. Now, um, some people might get confused and think that that the button that you tap to freeze it is like right. the in the same spot that is in the button where you take a picture, and it doesn't it's actually not. take a picture, but it does freeze no. what you're looking at. Right. It does freeze it. And then you also can, um, you that's can actually, in. that's on the display. Right. So mm -hmm. then you go into it and then you, you use the actual home button that's on the actual screen itself to freeze it. So you tap that and then it freezes it. And sometimes you don't get a good clear image, but if you do, then it, then it's there. And then you can just pinch to zoom and it's like, Oh my God, this thing's, if I can't read a serial number on something, I'm so I, I use this all the time now. Oh, for those teeny tiny little batteries. Yeah, the batteries and, and the serial numbers you're looking at. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty incredible. It's and it, what it was made for was for someone who has you know has got impaired vision, and mm -hmm. uh, to, and this this works out really well. So I thought that was a great tip. Um, Absolutely. Do you want to talk about the uh, the other yeah. app that's a little bit more of that tip on steroids? <laughs> Oh, is uh, you talking about uh, the Appbox? Appbox Pro, yeah. Yeah, go ahead for it. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead for it. So, 
this is a, one of those Swiss Army Knife type apps where it's one app and it's got several apps inside of it, many, many apps. And I'm only going to talk about the one because we were talking about the, the Zoom, the magnifier. It has right. a magnifier app in it. And the difference between this and what comes built into the iPhone is this does allow you to take pictures that then will get saved to your camera roll or in your photos app. And that's basically the main the major difference. Um, you can you can still use the the torch, you know, the flashlight to illuminate the area. You can still zoom in, but this one allows you to actually take a picture. So I really like that. And uh, this is going to sound gross, but hey, it's life and it's it's what we use our iPhones for. Um, if you have children, you'll understand this is just part of life. But you know, occasionally we get a letter home saying that there was a case of lice in the school. And so I have found this tool invaluable for checking my kids for lice. <laughs> <laughs> How do you use your iPhone? I use my iPhone to check my kids for lice. Check, check for lice. So, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, is that, is that just like playground dirt or is that, what is that? It's not moving, you know? <laughs> so that has come in handy for that sort of thing for checking moles and freckles and all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, you crack me up. <laughs> I know. But really, I mean. Come on, teeny tiny batteries. I mean, that's just the number one use for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is that code? What do I have to replace that with? Yeah, but yeah, this 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 app box pro has got a lot of great tools in there too. That you can use uh, for third party. Yeah, so we'll put a link um, to it and you can check it out. Yeah, you can check it out. I think it's what so, free, and then there's an in-app purchase if you want to get rid of the ads. So even if you just yeah. use it for that one feature, it's worth it. Some of those ads can be really, but make it make it worth paying for the uh, for the app yeah, to stop bugging definitely. you. So. Definitely. But as we get uh, near a close to our show here, I wanted to talk a little bit about MacStock. Yes. And both of us are again speaking at MacStock. I'm so excited. I know, we do. But this will be my third time, and uh, this is It'll your second, second time. It'll be my second yeah. time. The third annual. So I've been to all three. I'll be, I had been to all three. The trifecta. It's your the trifecta. last two. Uh, Mike Potter, Barry, Barry Falk have put on, put on just uh, a, a great uh, event the last two years, and this year's no, no different. There's the uh, a lot of great speakers going to be there, including myself, uh, Melissa, Melissa Davis, and she's going to be uh, doing a presentation with Jody Spangler. Yep. And uh, we got some big, big names like Chuck Joyner and Dave Hamilton, uh, just to name a few. Yeah, Dave was at the and first one, too. So he's He wasn't the first one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he had to be out of town that uh, second year, so I was really bummed that he couldn't make it. So there's a lot of great speakers that are going to be there. Allison Sheridan is also going to be there. She's she's. Uh, uh, great, and you got a lot of folks from uh, from the Mac Observer, including Jeff Gamut and David Cohen. Uh, Guy Cyril's going to be there with Sam Robertson doing a. Uh, I can't uh, wait! I can't wait for that. Uh, the quiz was it the the quiz, right? Yeah, something like that. Uh, Some kind of game that they're yeah. going to play. So we're it's we're, uh, so it's going to be an absolutely great event. Um, the website, if you want to go visit it, it's uh, macstock 2017com and you can go register, and we actually have a coupon code that you can save thirty dollars for the, uh, the the tickets. That's pretty exciting, nice. isn't it? Yeah. Um, We've so got if our you own go, coupon code. We, we do, and this is only our third episode. And, and <laughs> Mike Mike Potter was was gracious enough to give us a code, and the code to get thirty dollars off is uh, in touch with iOS, all one word, and uh, it's in Woodstock, Illinois, which is just outside of Chicago. And uh, it's an absolutely great event. We had a blast last year, and I think we're gonna we're gonna have an even bigger blast uh, this year. Um, the, there's also going to be a dinner, or actually, it's it's, a, it's actually Barry Barry Falk is doing the Mac Mingle uh, the, the, uh, between the, the first and second days. There's two full days for the session, so it's uh, July 15th and 16th uh, of this year. And uh, am I forgetting anything else, Ms. Melissa? There might. There's all kinds of things we could talk about about this, but I, I think you guys should really check it out. There's, all, I mean, for those of you who love Apple and and Mac and I'm computers and technologies, and you want to come see us. <laughs> I mean, I'll be talking about uh, how you can be efficient with your with iOS, and it's uh, I got, got got a good topic to talk about. I thought people, I've told a few, uh, as I've told people, they'll be like, hmm, this that looks pretty. Uh, Pretty interesting. I want to check oh, yeah. this out. So, but there's a lot of other. Uh, we could. I can go on. Yeah, even though it's that. Mac stock, there's still a lot of talk about other stuff besides just Macintosh. So don't let the name yeah. fool you too much. It's it's kind of you know, it's but, geeky and nerdy how they came up with that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it is kind of Mac centric, and it, mm -hmm. it you know the, the whole. The whole influence of Mac stock was was the fill the void of uh, of Mac World, which disappeared right. many years ago. And we can. I went to the lot. last one. It was my first and last Mac World. I'm jealous. I didn't get to make. <laughs> I didn't. 
to go there. But oh, that's okay. It was great. And, and I, I was just so excited. In fact, I missed the first Mac stock because we were on just like we're going to be on. In fact, we're doing it reverse. We actually engineered it this way. So the reason why I missed the first one was because we were on a road trip and we were so close. Right. Like I was looking at the map and I'm like, oh my gosh, we're just, we're two <laughs> hours away. But it just wasn't, it just wasn't the right timing. And we were already kind of on, on the way. So this time, um, so my family and I, we, every other year or so, we try to go on a road trip from Arizona to Pennsylvania, like I said. And so this time we're going to be coming back. So Max Stock is our stop on the way back to Arizona. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, it, it fits right, right in there. It'll be, and this time it's before our wedding anniversary. So <laughs> my husband and I actually get to celebrate together. Last year I, I was celebrating our wedding anniversary <laughs> at Max Stock. <laughs> this, he was like, go right, have a good that. time. That was like his anniversary gift to me. So that was kind of sweet. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to have the family in tow. I don't know if they'll actually attend Max Stock or maybe they're just part of it or something, but yeah. it'll, it'll be fun. So I'm looking forward to it again. I can't really can't wait. It yeah. was just such a I great time last year. Well, this podcast came met, out of so, it. Yeah, yeah, this podcast was like, you and I met and the Max Stock and, uh, baby. <laughs> this <laughs> it's the love child. It's the love child of Max Stock. <laughs> oh my God, you're killing me. I know, we're nerds. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's how that's that's where this this the, the concepts and ideas of this uh, podcast came to be. And Melissa and I met for the first time last year, and uh, and yeah, we, we really started hit it, off it in and, July, and then you know you got you were traveling and I got sick, and so now we're trying to get it no, no, back on the rails again. This. Yeah, so we'll talk so we'll, about this again in another episode. We'll we'll keep yeah, absolutely. talking about it again. Go to maxstock 2017com and uh, and go ahead and register. Uh, uh, use the coupon code in touch with iOS and you'll save thirty dollars off. It's like I said, it's a two day event, and uh, you will uh, you you won't regret it. It's, uh, so it's all it's one word. Fun. In touch with in touch iOS. With iOS. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, we're we're gonna try to keep things consistent with this sh- with the show, and, and, and I'm hoping we can at least maybe. Once every other week, but we kind of want to hold the commitment. But we really want to keep interest in pe- people uh, having some fun listening to what we have to talk about because uh, there's some there's like I said iOS is such a such a popular operating system and there's so many people who have iPhones there's so many people who have iPads so we, you can never have enough uh, to talk about when it comes to, We're, to we have to, like I said before we have a treasure trove of just stuff like D- Dave and I have a shared a shared note we'll let you in on a little bit of behind the scenes but we have a <laughs> note co- that we call the in touch with iOS brain dump and so every time yep. we think of something we like stick it on that little note there like, oh yeah we got to talk I'm, about that I'm very bad I didn't have that open during the whole show <laughs> <laughs> That's okay cuz we already had our we already had our Google show notes and we really? added stuff from from other notes, and so yeah, there's always something to talk about. We Dave and I will never run out of things to talk about when it comes to the show. I so. want to keep the show short and sweet. We don't want it to be you yeah. know, three four hours worth of because we could go on for three or four hours pretty easily. All we'll the stuff break we talk about. But, <laughs> yeah, so then you guys can just enjoy a good show, and it's not too long to, to listen to. And that's that's a lot of what the concepts of this of where this uh, show came from, and what we're looking to do. So uh, yeah, we want you to learn fun. something. Yeah, learn something and be able to listen to and listen to some of our fun antics when it comes to yeah. technology. We, we're we're both very passionate about it, so that's what's. Uh, we have a lot of fun with it. We want to share it with you. So with that, I guess we have to close this show up, don't you think? Huh? Yeah. So let let me take a crack at this. Thanks for listening, and we hope you are more in touch with iOS after hearing this episode. Subscribe to our podcast in your favorite podcatcher, and we look forward to bringing you more useful information in future episodes. And you can also subscribe to us in iTunes. I'm super excited about that. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you go to iTunes and search for I- In Touch with iOS, you will be able to find this feed. Well, obviously, you must have found this feed if you're listening to this. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, well, we'll and with that, links to it, and we'll get yeah. you there somehow. Absolutely. So um, with that, I'm David Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And I'm Melissa Davis, and you can find me online all over the place as The Mac Thanks for listening. <laughs>